sound like a preacher, but if I'm to take a piece from the book of Psalms in the Bible, chapter 48, which says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, I wouldn't be wrong to say that the people who created the All Saints Cathedral were not wrong, or rather, they picked bits and pieces of that to create this. It is uh, special in terms of one structure, the way the architecture was done. It's, it's Gothic uh, in its tra tradition. And if you look at the way the space is distributed, it's not uh, just a meeting room. It's not an auditorium. The space is uh, distributed in a way that it gives it an ambience of worship. Last week on the show, we established the All Saints Cathedral as an iconic space in East Africa's architecture. We also established the year it was founded and the first foundation stone, which was laid in the year 1917, to become a space specifically created to bring out worship, as the very Reverend Sami Wainaina explains. All Saints Cathedral is a church that has unique history. And so the moment you just enter here with the high walls, with the pews and the aisles, and the way everything in my experience, this is the only church that has those kind of uh, uh, um, uh, ambience uh, in terms of worship space. This week we went back to the All Saints to discover the very intricate details that made this church from the time it started. The All Saints architectural structure was done in phases like we had mentioned earlier. That tower which happens to be the bell tower, was created right outside the main church. And that also includes the organ tower, which was later in the years brought together to create one sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As I entered the church, I now started appreciating this elegant cathedral with high ceilings laced with decor with pleasant colorful round stained glass window above the seats to accommodate the large congregation that occupies most of the space all around the church. Something that speaks nothing but the medieval cathedral of England, which dates from between approximately 1040 and 1540. at the entrance to my immediate right and left I saw two wooden cases which contained Bibles. The Bibles were presented to the church by the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth in 1948. Above the cases is a cross which is a replica of the original 18th century cross set with Latin writings as a reminder that we worship as part of a worldwide church. <laughs> As you walk up to the nave, you come to the transcript crossing. That's between the north and southern towers of the cathedral. The provost double stall is at the right and the assistant to the provost stall is on the left. The choir stall's left and right seat sits up to 48 choristers or the choir people. The communion table or the altar is carved with the fruits of the earth and was presented for use in the new chancel as a memorial to the Archidion William Arthur Pittsbridge, who was a chaplain to the Bishop Haywood in 1930. 
The cross made of aluminium was installed in 1970 after the Festival of Flowers which was held in the cathedral in 1969. is what was called the chapter house. Now the interesting thing about the All Saints Cathedral is that it possesses one style of architecture that is common to some of iconic structures within the Nairobi Central Business District. For example, the Macmillan Library, the Nairobi Gallery, and the Parliament Building all possess the Masonic kind of architecture. The artifacts and deco have stories of decades of the Anglican movement in East Africa. Right above the door is a ceremonial sword laid up in the cathedral by Sir Philip Mitchell on his retirement as the governor of Kenya in 1952. The photographs around the chapter house are of the early bishops of Eastern Equatorial Africa. The ones on the outside the chapter house are of the bishops who have served in the recent past. The organ of All Saints Cathedral is one of the largest in Africa. The biggest is 18 feet long and the smallest is 4 inches in length. and 900 pipes no other church in the entire east africa has an organ of this magnitude in fact the man who used to play it more than 30 years ago john dixon is the same same man who repairs it up to date interestingly from what we picked on our research was this man has a lot to say about this space as the iconic and the ideal space for worship. Music is what keeps the cathedral alive. So I don't know what will come of this. It is during our visit that I met John Dixon, the man who has been playing the organ at the All Saints Cathedral. It's been a while since you played. Um, yes, I don't play very much now, I'm afraid. Being a member of the church for a very long time, John has played in many occasions and ceremonies. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, now, to answer your question. Yes. Um, the pipes you may have observed were in groups. Right. So there are four groups, one for each of these keyboards, and one for the feet, the pedals. Each of these stops, as we call them, mm -hmm. selects one set of pipes. Maybe you can play for us the old wedding, uh, wedding song. Yes, nowadays we don't play very much because most people bring a cassette of their favorite singer. Oh. So we don't 
We don't play the wedding marches very often, but some, uh, some people are still traditional. Oh, okay. uh, that's the that's the going out. You want the going out or the coming in? The coming in is more familiar. the changes in the architecture is what keeps John Dixon going. The church was built in uh, several stages. Most cathedrals in Europe and elsewhere have been built like that because to get all the money to build a huge church in one go is, well, you, you know, it's not easy. Right. So, and if you walk around the church outside, you will see that there are four foundation stones. Have you seen them? Yeah. Yes, you, you had them pointed out. The chancel is not as it was originally designed. It was all the architect who first did it, did the design for the whole church. But this, uh, this part was going to be more like that, with the uh, side aisles and pillars here. And then after the Second World War, when they built this end, they decided to change it and the local architect right. did the uh, design for this. And this is apparently, it's one of the widest unsupported church roofs in, uh, in the world anywhere. Really? Um, because most of them either have rafters or they have right. narrower roofs. Right. This is... Uh, what they call hammer beams, these beams at the sides which come out a little way and then support the main arch. And actually it's cheating a bit because the, um, the main rafters are actually steel and they're clothed with wood so it looks like wooden rafters. But they are actually steel girders to take the great weight of the church. These are Krapf and Rebben, or Rebben and Krapf, who were the first CMS missionaries on the coast. You must know their names. I know Krapf uh, and uh, Rebben. Uh, Johann Ludwig Krapf yes. and Rebben, the, the first ones to. Yes, yeah. on the coast. And then, and then this is Apollo Kivibulaya who was a Ugandan evangelist. A Ugandan who went into the Congo. He was known as the Apostle to the Pygmies. Yes. Um, oh. That's 120, 30 years ago. And that's James Hannington, who was uh, the first bishop of this area, who was murdered in Uganda. Uh, on the orders of Kabaka Wanga. What about the furniture? Has the furniture changed ever since? Um, well, apart from... Well, yes, see, it's, yeah. taken, it's taken time to... It took time to get the pews and the, um, the seats, the, um, the stacking chairs. Uh, maybe 10, 15 years old. These are the newest things, the chairs for 
the bishops and other big wigs. These are the newest that we've got. This was the governor's. So we've still got the crown of England there. Um, is that the city? This is the city council. So the this mayor. would be the mayor. The mayor would sit over here. Yes. And then... Who this was, I don't know. Maybe the army. the army. The army. Yes. So all the army generals would sit over here. On big occasions, yes. 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 The judges. Not the Air Force, yes. Yeah, looks like the Air Force. What about this, this one at the back? the organ which was imported from England in 1934. These, two. Yeah. These are so many pipes. Yes, there are about nearly 1900 pipes in the organ, yes. including the, those at the front uh, above the thing. These are the trumpets or the tromba pipes, which make a noise like a trumpet. Ah. Ah. That's some noise right there. Yes. And they're near the front so that they can get um, out, uh, the sound comes out well. So when you want a trumpet solo or a salute to the Archbishop or whatever, mm -hmm. that's, uh, there's pipes you can use. They are called reed pipes because the noise is made by a small reed, which is... It's like you have in the mouth piece of an oboe or a clarinet or a saxophone. Yeah. It's the same principle. Most of the pipes are flute pipes, which are like whistles. Ah. And of course, there are ones which make a, a low note as well, but they're too big for me to take out and blow. They, Low notes. And, uh, and they're made of what? Alumi they're made of what? Aluminium? No. Um, <clears throat> it's a mixture of lead and tin generally. Though some of the bigger pipes are made of zinc. But these are all, it's an alloy of lead and tin. Rather like solder is made of, but a different composition of the alloy. The big pipes are zinc because the lead and tin are a bit soft and uh, they tend to melt. Can you take a big noise? Yeah, sure. Yes. So this is the biggest pipe in the organ. It's 16 feet long. 
Space TV show and this week we are at the All Saints Cathedral. The interesting thing about this structure is that it bore fruit to arts compound like the one we are about to explore. Here is the Jumuia Coffee House. Trinity Center, which is a multi-purpose center which caters for the different needs that the church has to offer to its growing community. One that picked our eye is the elegant Jumuya Coffee House, which was formed under the umbrella of the National Council of Churches of Kenya. The space possesses a postmodern look and feel right from the word go. Above the ground floor is where the two meet. On one side, it plays an attic, the other, just a regular room with loads of stained glass windows which are not so far off from the 18th century design that we saw in the main sanctuary. Tell me the story of Jumuya. Why did you choose to have this one here? Uh, Jumuya is under NCCK umbrella. Uh, the NCCK has a commercial branch that is uh, and one of them is the results, Jumuya results. But its main aim is to uh, uh, generate revenue. You see the concept of a coffee house. We need to have an appealing design that can attract Seems also a selling tool in a place is designed in a relaxing way or an attractive way that can make you come back again so that you can feel this is the place I want to be. inside the Jumuya runs a parallel effect of a travertino decorative paint. The ceiling right next to it has been broadened by large mouldings and light effects. The furniture, find these are local made furniture, very cheap and very simple. We wanted a simple design also, but it's not that exaggerated. Right downstairs is a bar cloth effect on the main restaurant area. The rest is a carefully weaved deco and furniture that plays both the contemporary and the classic. Spaces such as this, the All Saints Cathedral. My name's Tim Jiru, thanking everyone who made this show a success, including the Provost of the All Saints Cathedral Church here in Nairobi. The question we like to ask you every single week is how ideal is your space? Be blessed and 